We do brought Abba Yahweh for another yom that he has given us, Yisrael, that we have gathered here at Teshua, those that are listening or viewing this by our live web feed. We say, we say shalom unto you all, Ko Yisrael. For truly Abba Yahweh has shined his Ahava, his blessings, his abundance upon us this day, Yisrael. So what I want to do before I begin this teaching, I want to start off with a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the for his abundance. To the for his abundance. To the for his abundance. In Yahshua, to the Yah for his abundance, to the Yah for his abundance, to the Yah for his abundance in Yahshua. He's given us a hava in abundance, he's given us joy in abundance. He has given us the Dhamma Yahshua in abundance. He has given us art and a hope in abundance. He has given us shalom in abundance. He has given us reassurance in abundance. To the Yah for the abundance in Yahshua. Let us to the Yah for. His abundance, to the Yah for His abundance, to the Yah for His abundance in Yahshua, to the Yah for His abundance, to the Yah for His abundance, to the Yah for His abundance in Yahshua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's go rock him, Israel. Let's give him Toda. Hallelujah. You know, I hear people, whether it's those that I talk to in the business that I meet, in the stores, Lowe's, places like that, and you hear them often say, if I just had a little more of this, or a little more, that's a little more money. Or a, a little more time. If I had just a little more, not much. Even Yahweh knows that we as a people and nation, we need his abundance, Yisrael. A little bit is not going to, it's not enough. It's not going to be a sufficient. Now, no Torah, it makes a statement that a little that a Sadiq man has, it's worth more than all the riches in the world. But yet, Abba Yahweh, he gives us of his abundance. It's more than all the riches. It's more than money. It's more than having vehicles. It's more than having what the world says is a fine home. Or a wardrobe of clothes. It's more than that, the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. So I wanted to express to us today, in this midweek scripture convey, is the abundance of Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. For he has given us much, and more than what we express as being much, Yisrael, because he has provided all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Money's not going to provide all that you need. There'll be a great gulf and an emptiness with just money. Having clothes or more than one pair of shoes. It's not enough, Israel. So does Torah teach us concerning the abundance of Almighty Yahweh, what it consists of? Sure it does. Does it tell us where it comes from? How do we possess it? Can it be denied of us as a people, as a nation, if we don't walk according to the Mishvah, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? I want to begin here. First of all, defining abundance much or overflowing yeah. it is more than just plenty but it's a great plenty yeah. it is a great quantity or amount yeah. Yeah. it is a large number 
plentiful in supply. It abounds. It multiplies. It increases. And it also increases the delight of one. We as a people in a nation, we want to delight in Almighty Yahweh. Do we delight in him? Yes. Don't you know he also desires or he wants to delight in us, Yisrael Yah? He has given us of his abundance in Yahshua HaMashiach. And he requires us to give unto him, Yisrael Yah, of all of our substance. Yes. And all that is within us with an abundance of Todah and praise unto him. Yes, Walking according to his mishpah, our lives reflecting what Torah teaches and what it speaks unto us, Yisrael. It is that which fills the land. It is abundance exceedingly to a great degree. And it is also of a source of great sufficiency. So there is a source that we as a people must tap into that flows from Yahshua HaMashiach, the stream, this living water, Yisrael. Yahweh, he speaks to us, Yisrael, as a nation, as a people, right here, and to helium and songs. Because Yahweh, he desires to satisfy us. Don't we want to be satisfied? We sit down to a meal, and the table is laid out and abundance and plenty to our feel, what we desire. Yet after a little while, a few hours, sometimes within minutes, we, we want a little more. Let us see what we has to say here in Psalms and Tehillim concerning this. He talks about the Hasid of the Hasi, or Almighty Yahweh. He said, your Hasid, O Yahweh, is in the Shemayim. If we would observe the Shemayims, the heavens, the sky, it is broad, is it not? Yes. The eye cannot visualize all that is in what we call the Shemayims of the heavens, Israel. Yeah. But that we said that your hasid, your loving kindness, your, your patience, Almighty Yahweh, is in the Hashemayim. And your amuna reaches unto the clouds. He says in chapter 36, verse 6, he said, your siddiq or your righteousness is like the great mountains. Don't you know the mountains express this abundance of Almighty Yahweh? Because when you look at a mountain, whether it is the Rockies or whether it is the highest of the plateaus of the mountains, those that are snow-capped, what you see is an abundance of what? Rock, of earth, the expanse of it somewhat overwhelms you. That even when you look at it from a distance, it is what I may say monstrous or very large and great. But you really don't feel the expression of that fully until you come up on to that mountain. It is great, it is mighty. It is full of abundance. He says, your siddiq or your righteousness is like the great mountains. And your judgments, they are not just deep, but they are great. They are great deep. They are so deep that even man cannot find even the end of it, Yisrael Yah. Your abundance, they are great deep, your judgments. Oh, Yahweh. He said, you preserve the sons of Adam and beasts. But you know it is Yahweh that preserves us, Yisrael Yah. That we are kept by the midst by the Torah, by the abundance in Yahshua HaMashiach. Because we exhaust very easily. We exhaust the patience of one another. Our own patience sometimes becomes short. But yet Yahweh, in his abundance, Yisrael, he has preserved us. He has kept us. Through our own flaws and our faults and our shortcomings, Yisrael, he did not destroy us. He has judged us, but he has not wiped us away, Yisrael, because of his abundance. He said, you preserve the sons of Adam and beast. And he says in verse 7, how excellent is your loving kindness, O Yahweh. Therefore the children of Adam put their trust 
under the shadow of your wings. Do we find trust in the shadow, Israel? Knowing that Yahweh, he covers us with his abundance. He covers us with the abundance of his Ahava, the abundance of his patience, of his long suffering in Yahshua HaMashiach. That we find comfort even in the shadows. Yes. He goes on and says in verse 8, they shall be abundantly, abundantly, yes. abounding, yes. overflowing. He says they shall be abundantly satisfied. Oh, With what? With riches? With wealth? With the physical means of life? More than that, Yisrael. He said, they should be satisfied with the fatness of your bed. Yes. In the bed, the house of Almighty Yahweh. In the comfort of the gathering. Yes. Of us assembling ourselves together in his name, Yisrael. He said, and you shall make them drink of the river of your pleasures. Don't we want to drink of the rivers? Yeah. Of the pleasures of Almighty Yahweh? Yes. Don't you know that in his right hand there are pleasures forevermore, Yisrael? Not the pleasures of this life or of the world that only last for a moment, but the pleasures of Yahweh that he gives to us in abundance. He says, we shall drink of the river. Now, he's talking about the river now, not like this little creek that trickles in the woods here. That's right. That mainly the water that falls from the Shemayim affects how that flows. But he's talking about rivers of living water, the rushing of a great and mighty river. He said, the river of your pleasures, verse 9. For with you is the fountain, the fountain from which all the pleasures flow from, of high, of life in Yahshua. Yahshua is the life. He is this fountain, Yisrael. He said, in your light, which is Yahshua HaMashiach, shall we see light? Shall we see the truth? Shall we understand? We are able to comprehend your abundance. And what you open unto us, Yisrael, what well, Yah opens unto us as a people. He goes on, and we will move to chapter 63, concerning this abundance, Yisrael, and how Yahweh satisfies us with plenty with much more than we can ever imagine, Yisrael, and Yahshua HaMashiach. Is it not all that we need? Do we truly believe that, Yisrael, that he is all that we need? It says here in Tehillim, chapter 63, verse 3. He said, because your love and kindness is better than life, How is that so? Because without his loving kindness, there's no life. There's no life, Israel, without Yahshua HaMashiach. So he says that your loving kindness, it is better than life. He said, my lips shall exalt you or lift you up, Almighty Yahweh, with a voice of praise unto you. He says, so I will barat you, yet while I live. Do we live, Israel? Are we trying to just maintain this physical means of life? So we're just surviving? It should be more than just a survival, Israel. Because we know we have all we need by the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. He gives us all that we need. He supplies all that we need, Israel. That we said, so will I, Barak, I will bless you while I live. He said, I will lift up my hands in your name, in Yahashem, Almighty Yahweh. He said, I lift my hands. Hallelujah. You know, it should not be a hard thing for us to lift our hands, Israel. We lift our hands, we show... That is Almighty Yahweh that has washed us and has cleansed these hands. And it's by the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach that we're able to lift 
our hands unto him, Yisrael. Without sin, without any kind of reproach. He said in verse 5, he said that my nephesh, my innermost being shall be satisfied as with morrow and fatness in abundance. And my mouth shall praise you, Almighty Yahweh, with joyful lips. Why? Because he realized he understood the abundance of Almighty Yahweh, that it only came from him. The riches and the things that was given, it only came from Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. Life and abundance. His ahava and abundance, Yisrael. It comes from Almighty Yahweh. So he said, with lips of joyfulness, he said, I will praise you. And he says in verse 6, that I will zakah, I will remember you upon my bed, even when I sleep. Even in my brush of death, close, where I should fall asleep, yet he realized that Almighty Yahweh, I zakah, I remember all of your abundance even upon my bed. And he said, I meditate upon you even in the night watches. Do we meditate upon Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael? Yeah? Do we take time and somewhat view our day, our week, and see how Yahweh has kept us, how he supplies what we need, Yisrael? Yeah? Not with just enough, but even more than enough, Yisrael. Yeah? He keeps us. That we're able to lay upon our bed and give him, give him toda as we close our eyes, knowing he has fulfilled and more so has fulfilled his word unto us for that day. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, even in the night watches, in the late nights, then we kind of, every once in a while I get up late, whether it's the baby or I just somewhat awaken. Yet even in that, we should zakah, we should remember Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because even in that, it is him that gives us sleep. It is Yahweh that gives us rest. He said he gives his beloved sweet rest, Israel. Yeah. Turn with me to Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 11. I want to begin reading there. Because it is Yahweh that gives us of the fatness. What is that? Fat is somewhat the excess, even in the body, of energy that has not been used. The body stores in what we call fat when it does not burn. It is put away. I look at our little child, the day Vina, how she's putting on weight, getting what we call the double chin. She's becoming stronger, yet you can see the fatness upon her. That shows that the milk, it is rich. It is full of everything that she needs. It's a sign of health and wealth, Israel. So let's see what Yahweh says here. Yeah. Jeremiah 31, verse 11. For Yahweh, he has redeemed Yaakov. Yaakov is a representation, a representation of call of Yisrael. And ransom him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Verse 12. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the heights of Zion. And shall flow together to the tub of Almighty Yahweh for wheat and for wine and for oil. For the young of the flock and of the herd. And the nephesh, the Torah says shall be as a watered garden. We have heard this example over and over. If you look at a garden, even in the heat, when it does not get the water that is necessary, you will find it wilting. You'll find it somewhat degressing. Why? Because there's not enough water and moisture. Even the leaves somewhat, when the heat is exceeding, they automatically start to fold and close up. But the Torah says that even at this redemption, how Yahshua HaMashiach has redeemed us, Israel, yeah. with the abundance of what he has given us, that we as a people will be as 
a watered garden, revived, fat, full of his ahava, full of his loving kindness, Yisrael, overflowing, and it will be visual. You will see it upon us. How? Because you will see, see the fatness. You will see the rejoicing. You will see in the Barak, a todah unto Yahweh. You will see it in the working of your hands. Even in the stride or the movement of one. You will see that, Yisrael. Why? Because the fatness of Yahweh, it is visual. Fat is visual. When you have fat, you can't, it's hard to hide it, is it not? And when you think you're covering it, you know that it is still there. So is the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. He said that we will be as a watered garden. And they shall not sorrow anymore Beautiful. at all. He said we shall not sorrow. We, shall not, we will not be in need or in want, Yisrael. Because of his abundance. Because of the fatness of Almighty Yahweh. Verse 13. He says, Then shall the virgin rejoice in a dance. He said, both the young men and old men together. Yes. Why? He said, for I will return the morning, or I will turn the morning into joy. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. It is Yahweh that turned even our mourning into joy. Even our sorrow, Yisrael, into joy. And we would just observe his abundance and what he has done for us, Yisrael. Even the smallest of things yes. that we think are small are from the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. He said, I will turn their mourning into joy, and I will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrows. Amen. Verse 14. And Yahweh said, and I will. He said, I will. He said, I will fill the nethish. He said, it will be me that does it. It was I, Yahweh. Not with the abundance of things, because things don't bring joy. It may bring a masking of what we may think is joy, but it's only for a moment, Yisrael. It fades away. But Yahweh said, for I will feel the nephesh of the coin now with fatness. We need the leaders of those that lead the house of Ko Yisrael, are filled with the fatness of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because it is the Kohen that feeds, that gives the Mishra, the Torah, unto Yisrael. Yeah. Do we want Yahweh to feed us, Yisrael? Yeah. Then we should pray for the Kohen. We should pray for the Malak, the messengers, Yisrael. Yeah. That Yahweh will fill them with the fatness. Why? Let us read on and see what it says here in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 14. And my people shall be satisfied with my tongue, yeah, yeah. saith Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yahweh said he satisfied us with his tub. Where did his tub come from? Yeah. What is the tub of Almighty Yahweh? Is it not his mitzvah? Is it not his promises? Is it not the Torah, Yisrael, yeah. that satisfies us? He satisfies us with tough things in Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, you fill the nephesh of the koyim with, koyim with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied by my tub, says Almighty Yahweh. And you know that even this tub or this satisfying or this abundance, it has to begin. There's a starting point. And where does that start? Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. The promises of Almighty Yahweh, it starts with the election. It starts with his choosing. He chose us as a people, as a nation, not because we were mighty in number, but because his ahava has been shed upon us. And he shall fulfill his promise to the fullness, Israel, his oath, what he has spoken by his Mishra, by his Torah. He says in Deuteronomy, Debram chapter 7, verse 7. He said, Yahweh did not set his Ahava upon us, Yisrael, nor did he choose us because we were more in number than any other people. For Yahweh, or for you, were the fewest of all people. We were the fewest in number. 
Not because we were great or we had so much to offer before Almighty Yahweh. But he says this in verse 8. But because Almighty Yahweh, he loved us. He ahava us. That's all it is, Yisrael. He loved us abundantly with his ahava. We should give Yahweh Toda for his ahava. Hallelujah. For he had chosen us because he has loved us, Yisrael. And because he would keep the oath, the promise, which he did swear or he swore unto our avats, unto our fathers. As Yahweh brought us even out of Mizraim by a mighty hand, he has redeemed us out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So it starts right there with the promises. It starts right there with his oath, with his ahava, that he has shed upon us, Yisrael, in his abundance. Also to show us this example of his abundance, turn with me to Bereshith, Genesis, chapter 32, verse 11. Concerning his promise unto Israel as a nation. Because even before Yaakov, Yahweh had laid his promise, his Ahaba, upon us, Israel. Yes, yes. Yes. It says here in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 32, verse 11. This is his prayer of Yaakov unto Almighty Yah. He says, To deliver me, I pray you. Do we pray for deliverance? Israel, yeah. we should pray for deliverance. We should ask Yahweh to deliver, to bring us out of trouble. We look for any and every other way but turning unto him. We know that our abundance, all that we need comes from him, Israel. Yeah. So why should we find other means to find this satisfaction? It only comes from Almighty Yahweh. So he says, deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother from Esau. But you know there are those, our brother, just as Esau, that seek our life, Israel, yeah, daily. That's why it's important that we keep our minds on Almighty Yahweh in the Mishra and Torah. Because if we allow the enemy to come in, then he will destroy us. Your Ahava, your Imuna, your faith, your assurance, Israel. Yeah. If we open that door, the enemy, he will come in and destroy that. He will come in and taint that. He just need a little bit. He will add a little more. And before you know it, you'll find yourself contaminated by the world and by the lust and by the things of the world, Yisrael. But he prayed unto Yahweh to deliver him out of the hand of Esau. He said because he feared him. He was afraid. He was afraid for his life. He was afraid for his sons, the children, his veins. Least he will come and smite me, and the mother with the sons. He said, they will destroy all. He will destroy all that I have, all that you have given me. But yet Yahweh has given his promise in his abundance that they will multiply even as the sands of the sea, Israel. It says here in verse 12, and you... Almighty Yahweh said. Did he say Yahweh said? Yeah. It was not, not a promise. Is it not a promise? Yeah. So if Yahweh have spoken it and he speaks it, is it not settled in Hashemayim Yisrael? Yeah. So what was the worrying about? Yeah. Where did the fear come in? Yah has given us his abundance, Yisrael. We have no need to fear Esau or our enemy. Why? Because Yahweh, he has promised. He has given us his, his word, his promise. He said, I will surely do you right and make your seed or your zebra as the sand of the sea. So even at that, he would have taken that to heart and observed the abundance of Almighty Yahweh that he has given him. Even the sheep, the ram, the goats, and all that he possessed, his children, and all those things, Yahweh said that I will multiply your zebra, your children. So there's no need to even to be afraid of Esau. There's no need for us to be afraid, Israel, of those things which shall come. For those things seem mightier than we are. But yet, if we put our imuna in Almighty Yahweh, and what he speaks and what he promises, Israel, 
Do we have no need to fear? There'll be nothing that will overtake us. Nothing shall destroy us. Yes, right, y'all. I, I have a, and I love towards Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because of his promises. And we just hold on to his promises. And what he has spoken unto us, Israel, in abundance. He said, I will surely multiply your zero, your seed, your seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So does the abundance start in the promises of Almighty Yahweh? Sure it does. Should we rely and depend and have imuna in the promises of Almighty Yahweh? Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. For Yahweh, he does require obedience of us to walk according to his promises and according to the mystery of Almighty Yahweh, that we may continue to receive these blessings, Yisrael. And if we don't walk in them, then he will bring us to ruin as a nation, as a people. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. It says, moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and, you sh and shall pursue you. They shall come after you. We shall not escape them, Israel. We cannot run from Almighty Yahweh. He said they will pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed. Why? Because you observe or you listen not, you did not obey the voice of Almighty Yahweh, your Abba. So when not he send the curses upon us if we do not obey his Mishra and his Torah. And even in that, they're in abundance, Yisrael. That it destroys a nation and a people. It brings them low to nothing. Why? Because we do not obey his voice. It goes on and says... To keep his commandments. A couple of couple days ago, I talked about the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. We must keep his commandments, Yisrael. Yeah. Yeah. We cannot continue in this walk without keeping his commandments. Yes. We cannot continue to walk in the abundance of Almighty Yahweh if we do not keep his commandments. He said we must keep his commandments and his statues, which he has commanded us. Verse 46. He says, And they shall be upon you for a sign and for a wonder upon you and your seed, your children, forever. Yes. Verse 47. He said, Because you serve not Almighty Yahweh your Abba with joyfulness. How do we serve him with joyfulness? Yes. By walking in his commandments. And by walking in his commandments, we, it, his blessings, they fall upon us in abundance, Israel. But we must walk after the commandment. We must obey the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That's the, truth. That's the only way we're going to come into his presence and to the bed of Almighty Yahweh with joyfulness. With Todah. Look at what Yahweh has brought us from. As you heard the old condition so many times say, he brought us from a mighty long way. Yeah, yeah. I'm young in age, but he has brought me a mighty long way, Israel. Yeah, yeah. And I told Yahweh for it. Because it's by his abundance that I am kept. Hallelujah. Verse 27. He said, Because you serve not Yahweh your Abba with joyfulness and with gladness of love for the abundance of some things. Yes. And what does it say? All, all things. So he's given us all things in abundance, Israel. Right, but if we don't walk according to his commandments, then we will not be able to rejoice fully in what he has done for us, Israel. Right, Hallelujah. He has done much for us. So let us rejoice. Let us be joyful for life. For his abundance, his ahaba, and it is even better than life. Because without it, Yisrael, life is not even worth living. It's not worth living without his abundance in Yahshua HaMashiach. Again, in Deuteronomy chapter 10, let us move back in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. Again, we must walk after these commandments of Almighty Yahweh that we may see his great abundance. Yes. We allow sin, we allow our own lust, 
We disobey the Torah, and it causes our eyes to be blinded, where we cannot see even the blessings of Almighty God. We find ourselves murmuring and complaining. And as the song would say, count your blessings, name them one by one. Then we may observe and see what Yahweh has done, Yisrael. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 19. He says, Ahaba therefore the stranger, we must Ahaba the stranger, have concern for them. For you were strangers in the land of Mizraim. We were all strangers in the land of Mizraim. Verse 20. He said, you shall fear Almighty Yahweh your Abba, and him shall you serve, and to him shall you grasp, or you shall cleave unto. Yes. And we shall swear by his name. We let all things come through his name, and by him, Israel. Everything is made by the speaking, by the word, by Almighty Yahweh, in Yahshua HaMashiach, and without the word, there will not be anything made that is made. So by all things, we give told out unto Almighty Yahweh. We acknowledge that it is Almighty Yahweh. That he has control of everything, Israel. Verse 11. It says, Yahweh is your praise. Is Yahweh our praise? Is he, why, is, is he the reason why we praise Israel? That we extol and we exalt, we lift his name. And he is your sovereign ruler. It is he that has done these things, and great and terrible things, which our eyes have seen. We look back, we see how Yahweh has brought us out of situations, out of circumstances, and if it were not for him, we would not be here today. I can call many accounts where there have been close calls. People want to say it's by chance, it is by luck. I don't believe in that. I believe just as Torah says, it was Almighty Yahweh. I give total unto Yahweh yes. for those things. Yes. Yes. He has brought us out of darkness, out of Mizraim, into his great light, Yahshua HaMashiach. He says also in verse 22, For your avats or your fathers, they went down into Mizraim with 70 persons or people. And now Yahweh, he has multiplied by abundance. Now Yahweh your Abba has made you as the stars of Hashemayim yes. for multitude. Yes. Can we count the stars? No. Man believes he has a count on the stars, but he cannot. Even the ones that are visual, he can't count them. They try to estimate or guess how many is in a certain amount of space. They do not know Israel. Right. Those things are only in the treasure te chest of Almighty Yahweh. The expanse and all those things. Man, do, they do not, we do not understand. Man, are, they are not going to understand by, by physical means. No matter how great they try to make their uh, devices to peer into the Shemaiah, man would never know. Hallelujah. But yet Yahweh knows. Because he said he multiplied Yisrael even as the stars for multitude. He cannot be counted. He cannot be numbered. Hallelujah, for abundance. Turn me to Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 21. Yahweh, he bestows great abundance upon Yisrael as a nation. We're talking about the abundance of Yahweh tonight in Yahshua HaMashiach. It says in Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 21. It says, yes, 40 years did you sustain them in the wilderness. Yahweh, he sustains us. Even in this wilderness, Israel. So they lack nothing. Neither their clothes wax not old. Can you imagine that for 40 years? I buy my jeans from Walmart sometimes. Sometimes I get them from Goodwill, places like that. They only last a decent pair with the kind of work that we do. A couple of weeks, a couple of months, depending on what we do. You spill things on them from the chainsaws, they don't last. But the Torah says 40 years as they went through the wilderness. I know what it's like walking through dense woods. You get tears, rips, things wear out. Yeah. But yet because the abundance of Almighty Yahweh, because he looked upon Yisrael, 
He said, their clothes, they wax not old. And their feet, they did not become weary, or they swelled not. Verse 22, moreover, you gave them kingdoms and nations and did divide them into the corners. So they passed in the land of Sion and in the land of the king of Heshbon and the king of Og, king of Bashan. He said, their children also multiply as the stars of Hashemayim. And you brought them into the land concerning which you had promised to their avats. Talking about the promises again, the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. That they should go and possess it. So the children, they went in to possess the land. And you subdued before them the inhabitations of the land. Even in the Canaanites and gave them into their hands. And their king and the people of the land that they might do with them as they would. But you see the power of the might of Almighty Yahweh, the abundance of his promises, just right, y'all. Verse 25. And they took strong cities and the fat of the land, those things that the land yielded, those things that they possessed. He said, Yahweh, giving them the fat of the land. And, the, and they possessed houses full of tough things. Wells and vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance. Yahweh give everything that Yisrael needed at that time in abundance. They did not lack in anything. The enemy was subdued before them. They moved out of their way. Why? Because as long as we continue Yisrael in the commandments of Almighty Yahweh, he does those very same things for us continually. And we walk in his Mishra and his Torah says the vineyards in abundance. And they did eat and were filled, and they became fat. They became fat. They become full of the abundance of things and the possessions. Let us read on. And they delighted themselves in your great Ahava, in your great tongue. They delighted in the things that Yahweh has given in abundance. Verse 26. And this is exactly like we do today, Israel. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. Even though all the things Yahweh he has done for us, that we know he is going to do, yet we find ourselves still being disobedient. Yahweh provided everything that they need in abundance, even to the point they became fat. But yet still, they become disobedient. And they rebelled against you, and you cast the Torah, or they cast the Torah behind their backs. Do we think we're going to continue in the abundance of Almighty Yahweh and these things that we experience if we turn our backs on Almighty Yahweh? We turn our backs on his Mishvah, Yisrael. It will not be. And they cast your Torah behind their backs, and they slew the Nabi which testify against them to return unto you. Do we slew or slay the Nabi? Do we find ourselves fighting against the messenger of Almighty Yahweh and correction and rebuke as he showed us the way to return back unto Almighty Yahweh? Let me read on. And they work great provocations. They provoke Almighty Yahweh. Verse 27. Therefore you delivered them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. And in time of trouble, when they cry unto you, Almighty Yahweh, you heard them even from the Shemaya. See, he did not just forget us, Israel. Even though he allowed us to fall for a time in the hand of our enemies because of our iniquity and our sin, yet he still hears us, Israel. He hears our cry unto him. And we come to Almighty Yahweh broken, and of a contract rule out Israel, he hears us. But we must return back unto him. He said, you heard their trouble when they cried unto you, Almighty Yahweh. You heard them from Hashemayim according to your manifold hasset that you have given unto them. So he has given us his ahava, his hasset, Yisrael, in abundance. 
They are plentiful. They have not run out because if they have ran out Israel, yeah, we would not be here today. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, because of your manifold hostage and your Ahava, you gave them deliverance, who delivered them out of the hand of their enemies. But after they had rested, they did evil again before you. Therefore, you left them in the hand of your enemies so that they had dominion over them. Yet, when they return and cry unto you, Almighty Yahweh, yet still you heard them from Hashemayim. Yes. Yahweh, he still hears us. We must turn unto him, Yisrael. Yes. Even the, in the abundance of things that Yahweh has given us, Yisrael, we cannot turn our thoughts away from him. Because it is him that provides those things. We cannot forget Almighty Yahweh. We cannot forget his Mishra and his Torah because that's the only thing, only way that his abundance will continue to flow upon us as a nation, as a people. But yet, even at this we see, even our rebellion, we turn to get away from Almighty Yahweh. Yet because the abundance of his Ahava and his Hasid Yisraeli, when we cry unto him, he still hears us. He has not left us to wallow in the muck and the mire of the world. But we must turn to him, Yisraeli. We must return unto him. He said, even when Yisrael turned, in verse 28, when they cried unto you from, when they cried unto you, you heard them from Hashemayim. And many times did you deliver them according to your Hasid. So his Hasid, he continues to deliver us, Yisrael. He continues to bring us out of troubles. He continues to provide those things that are needed unto us as a nation and people, Israel. But we must continue. We must walk according to his Mishra. We must walk according to his promises and his commandments, Israel. That's the only way that his, that continue those things will flow upon us in the abundance of his Ahava and his kindness, Israel. Yahweh, he promised unto Israel, to the Zira, this flow of abundance. Let me read here in Shema, in Exodus chapter 1, verse 6. Even as those passed, and as we see here, Yosef, he passed, he, he went on. It says in chapter 1, verse 6, And Yosef died, and all of his brothers, and all that generation, and the sons of Yisrael, were fruitful. So even though Yosef, he went on, his brothers, all those, they have gone on. Yeah. There are those that have gone on, Yisrael, y'all, before us. There are those that rest, that are even out there now in the grave. They have gone on, but yet nothing has stopped. We have continued to go on, Yisrael. Yeah. The abundance of Yahweh has not stopped. They have not ceased. Verse 7. And the sons of Yisrael, they were fruitful, and they continued to increase abundantly, and they multiplied. Do we think they multiplied in just physical things? They multiplied in also their understanding, the Torah and the Mishpah. And they waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land they were filled with them. How do we know that we are the true nation? that has been promised of this abundance, Israel. Yes. Do we continue to increase? Yes. Do we continue to multiply our harbor toward our, our hope, towards the things of Almighty Yahweh? His commandments, do they continue to multiply? You know, that's how we know that we are this nation, that Yahweh speaks his promises, and we continue in his Mishra and his Torah, and we move on. Yeah. As the old condition say, higher heights and deeper depths in Yahshua HaMashiach. We must move on. We must be a people that the abundance of Almighty Yahweh continues to multiply in our house, in our children, and their children's children. In Yochanan chapter 10, verse 10, for we do have a tough shepherd, Yisrael, and the purpose of the shepherd, Yahshua HaMashiach, it is to lead us, is to guide us into green pastures. Why? Because he cares about the flock. He cares about 
the sheep and also the little lambs, the day and the children. So he leads us in pastures for what? His name's sake. So he guides us. Why? Why are the pastures or where Yahshua leads us to Mishra the Torah are so important? Because he leads us to those things that are needed. The nourishing. That the flock receives the proper nutrients. That they multiply and that they continue. You see what Yachan has to say, chapter 10, verse 10. The Torah says the thief, or the enemy, comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Yahshua says, I am come that they, that Yisrael, may have life and that they might have it more abundantly more abundantly, overflowing with riches, overflowing with imuna, knowing that Yahweh will keep what he has promised unto us as a nation. It started with his Ahava, did it not? And it shall continue with his Ahava, Yisrael. Verse 11, Yahshua says that I am the tough shepherd. And the tough shepherd, he gives his life for the sheep. But there is a hireling. Don't we know there is a hireling? There are those false ones. Yes, and many times we think about those and them, and we do not apply this to ourselves. Yes. But many times we are false with each other, Israel. Yes. But yet the Torah should bring us or tell us the truth. Yes. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep there are not. He sees the wolf coming, and he leaves the sheep. He flees. And the wolf catches them, and he scatters the sheep. It says in verse 13 that the hireling fleeing, flees because he is a hireling, and he cares not for the sheep. Verse 14, Yahshua says that I am the tough shepherd. And he, Yadda, he knows his sheep. He knows us. He understands our ways. He knows our thoughts, Israel. He knows what we have need of. And even in the face of trials and tribulations and our enemy, even our own self, Israel, he knows what we have need of. He said, I am the tough shepherd. And I, Yadda, I know my sheep. And I am known of mine. He said that we know him. Do we know him, Israel? Yes, yes, yes. By the abundance of what he has done for us. Yes, yes. Every breath, every heartbeat, every step that we take, Israel, it is from Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Verse 15. As Abba Yada knows me, even so I know the Abba. And I lay down my life for the sheep. The abundance of Yahshua Hamashiach, even he laid down his own life for Ko Yisrael. Why? Because we did not have what was needed to present unto Almighty Yahweh for the remission or for the washing of our iniquity, of our sins. It would be much more than all of us together that are listening, that are scattered around the world. Even if we brought our resources together, it could not pay for the sin. But yet in Yahshua HaMashiach and the abundance of Yahweh Zahava and his word and what he has spoken and promised us through him, Yisrael, only through him provides this offering that is acceptable before Almighty Yahweh. He said, I give my life for the sheep, verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold or of this house, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. We must hear his voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So shall, is he bringing us all together, Israel? Out of every nation, out of every place, he gathers us that we may be one fold under one shepherd. Therefore does my avah, he harvest me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Verse 18. He makes this statement. 
For no man takes it from me, so no one can take my life. No one can take of the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. He has given unto Israel. But I lay it down of myself. He says, of my tough pleasure to offer the abundance of my life for the washing, for the cleansing of the sins of Kol Yisrael. He said, I give my life. I'll give up the abundance and the, 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 the substance of my life why that we may live, Yisrael. He said, I lay it down. He said, and I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. He said, this commandment have I received of my Abba. So he received that commandment of Almighty Yahweh. The power to give it, to lay it down, and even to take it up again, Yisrael. That's a great abundance. That's a great promise unto Ko Yisrael. Because just as we lay down our lives in Yahshua HaMashiach, we shall be raised again. By the very same Ruach, by the very word, by this very same commandment that was given unto Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because Yahweh has given us of his abundance. And it's more than all the world could give. This promise, this covenant, this abundance from Almighty Yahweh, this promise. Hallelujah. It says here in Tehillim chapter 37, verse 11. If you will turn there, Tehillim 37, verse 11. We must understand these promises of Almighty Yahweh that are in Yahshua HaMashiach. So what should we do? And the battles, the trials of life. Yes. And what should we glean from them that we may understand what Yahweh is doing? What he is working within us. To Hebrews 37 verse 11. The Torah says that the meek shall inherit the earth. And they shall delight themselves in the abundance of shalom. We should delight ourselves. And the abundance of shalom, Yisrael. Because we are those that shall inherit the old land. The abundance. Those things that Yahweh gives. Just as Israel, Yisrael, out of Mizraim, did he not provide everything they needed? Their clothes did not wither. Their shoes, they fit their feet. Their feet did not even swell. Yahweh gave them the abundance of the land, the nation, their enemies moved out before them and they became fat. That's what Yahweh desires us to do. That's what Yahweh desires. That's what he wants for us, Israel. But we cannot forget Yahweh. He said, he shall delight themselves in the abundance of shalom. He, said in verse, he says in verse 1, chapter 51, to Helium. Let us move to chapter 51 quickly. Concerning this abundance. That we may understand Israel. Tehillim 51 and 1, he says, Have hasid upon me, O Yahweh, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude, the abundance, the overflowing, that which cannot be measured or counted. He said, The multitude of your tender hasid. He says, To blot out my transgressions. That's the only way it's going to be done. By the multitude of his ahava. By the multitude of his, his, his uh, patience with us, Yisrael, that we cry, blot out my transgressions, my sins, Almighty Yahweh. Again, in Tehillim chapter 66, verse 2. 66, verse 2 and verse 3. He says, sing forth the splendor of his name. We must sing forth the splendor of his name. We must confess that Yahweh, he is all and all. And he's all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. He says, sing forth the splendor of his name. Make his praises splendid. Verse 3. Say unto Yahweh, how awesome are you in your works. He is awesome. I hear Abner sometimes when he sees something that delights him, he'll say, awesome. Yahweh, he says here, how awesome, how great, how magnificent are your works. He said, through the greatness of your power, shall your enemies submit themselves unto you. The greatness of his power, the multitude of his power, Yisrael, shall even, even the enemies of Almighty Yahweh, they should be subdued. 
they were not overcome. When they set out to pry even against Israel, his nation, they should not be executed, Israel. Why? Because the abundance of Almighty Yahweh is upon his people, his chosen. He spoke it from the, to Helium, the beginning of all things, the Bereshit of all things. And his word has not failed even to this day, this very second. His abundance is poured out and laid out for a cold Israel. Not for every nation, but for his nation, his flock, his people. Turn me to Romeo. Romans chapter 5, verse 15. I want to talk about just a little here concerning the abundance even in the death of Yahshua HaMashiach. That even in that death, it brought forth great life, great understanding, and great wealth for us, Ko Yisrael. For Yahweh, he harvests us greatly, but it's only through the righteousness of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Romeo chapter 5, verse 15. He says that this gift, or but the gift, is not like the fall of man. For if through the office of one, many be dead. Yeah. The offense, the offense of one, many be dead. But much more the free unmerited Ahava and favor of Almighty Yahweh. He says that the gift by the free unmerited Ahava and favor which is by one man, we know that one man is Yahshua HaMashiach, has abound or has multiplied unto many. Only through Yahshua HaMashiach. Through him. Not any other man or any other Adam, but through him alone, Yisrael. Has the abundance of Yahweh Zahaba been multiplied? Verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. From the beginning, the judgment of one condemned the whole world. But the free gift is of many offenses to justification. 17, verse 17. For if by one man's offense... Death reigned by one. Much more they which receive the abundance of this free unmerited pardon from Almighty Yahweh, his Ahava and his favor. It is a gift of Siddiq of righteousness shall reign in one life by one. Yahshua HaMashiach. Does he reign? Does not he live, Yisrael? That by the abundance of this has been given this gift of life of redemption in Yahshua HaMashiach and his abundance of his Ahava for Kol Yisrael. And it's more than enough, Yisrael. His dam is more than sufficient. His Ahava is more than sufficient. This gift from Almighty Yahweh is more than sufficient. His word is more than sufficient, Yisrael. And it abounds upon us. It multiplies. Talking about the great abundance of Almighty Yahweh in Yahshua HaMashiach. Turn with me to Isaiah as I bring this to a close tonight. This teaching that we understand that it is by the abundance of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Now, what we, what we have done, what we think are tough or quote good things, it doesn't mean anything. It's only by the Ahava, by the word that is settled in Hashemayim forever. Isaiah 63, verse 7. This is concerning the abundance of the loving kindness of Almighty Yahweh. Towards Israel, his assembly, his people, his house, the bed. Isaiah 63, verse 7. He said, I will mention, I will make known, I will confess the loving kindness of Almighty Yahweh. Do we make mention his loving kindness? Do we tell our, our, our hope concerning the Ahava and the kindness of Almighty Yahweh? He said, I will make mention of the loving kindness of Almighty Yahweh. And the praise of Yahweh, according to all coal he has bestowed upon us. He has bestowed much upon us, Yisrael. And the great Ahava, the tub, towards the house of Yisrael, which he has bestowed on them according to his husband, his promises. And according to the multitude, the abounding, 
the innumerable amount of his Ahava towards us, Yisrael. Verse 8. For he says, surely they are my people. Sure are. Yahweh says we are his people. We are his nation. Children that will not lie. So he was there. He is our deliverer. Verse 9. And all their affliction, Yahweh, was afflicted. And the Malak is present to deliver them. Aren't you glad for that, Yisrael? His messenger. He's ever present in a time of trouble. In the time of need. He said his love and his pity. Yahweh, he redeemed us all. And Yahweh bears them. He bears us and carries us all the days of old. He still carries us by the abundance of his ahava, his kindness, Yisrael. And again, we see the same example as I read earlier. But they rebel and vex his Kodesh Ruach. Therefore, Yahweh was turned to be their enemy. We don't want Yahweh to be our enemy, Israel. Because if Yahweh is against us, who could be for us? And Yahweh, if he's for us, then who could be against us, Israel? We will make sure that of our calling and our election that it is sure in Yahshua HaMashiach. And that we not turn from his mishra, that we not turn from the Torah, Israel. He said, but we rebel, or they rebel, and verse and vex the Ruach HaKodesh. For Yahweh, he was turned to be their enemy. And Yahweh fought against them. Verse 11. Then Yahweh, he zakhar, or he remembered the days of old. Moshe and his people saying, where is Yahweh that brought them out of the land? And out of the sea? With the shepherd of his flock, where is he that put his Ruach HaKodesh within him? That led them by the right hand of Moshe with his strong, his beautiful arm. We know that this arm is Yahshua's arm. It is the Mishvah, it is the Torah that has delivered us to Israel. He said that this arm dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. Is that not what he did, Yisrael? His arm was set for us. That he may make his name, his power, his word, his testimony, his promises known towards us, Ko Yisrael. Did he make himself known? He has made, he revealed himself. Did he not, Yisrael? Every day he reveals himself unto us. As we awaken, he reveals himself. When we lay down, he reveals itself. I'm going to read this in my closing. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4, verse 13. Does not Yahweh, does he not give life? And even eternal life, it comes from Almighty Yahweh. It's a gift. From the abundance of Almighty Yahweh to give life. In the abundance of life. So should we faint, Israel, because of the turmoil, what things that we face? We should not faint, but we should not call, remember the promises of Almighty Yahweh. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We have the same Ruach of Imunah, of faith, Imunah. According to as it is written, I believe. And therefore I have spoken. He says, we also believe, and therefore we speak. Do we speak of those things? Do we testify of those things that we believe, that we lay hold to, Yisrael, that we grasp? We should speak of the, the hustle of Almighty Yahweh and the things he has done for us. Verse 14. He said, knowing that he, which has raised up Yahshua HaMashiach, he shall raise us up also by that same testimony, by Yahshua HaMashiach. Do we believe that, Yisrael? Yes. It is him that raises us. He picks us up daily. In the midst of turmoil, 
in the midst of, of trials and tribulations and things that happen even in the world, it is Yahweh that lifts us up daily. It is Yahweh that gives us strength. It is Yahweh that delivers us through Yahshua HaMashiach. So even by death, we shall be raised just as Yahshua HaMashiach was raised. And shall present us with you. Verse 15. For all things are for your sakes. All things have been done for us, Israel, through Yahshua HaMashiach, the abundance of him, his misfire. That the abundant, free of merit to Ahava and favor, might through thanksgiving to die, may overflow to the honor and the splendor of Almighty Yahweh. They should overflow. It must overflow. Why? Because the abundance of Almighty Yahweh. So the abundance of praises should overflow, Yisrael, out of our bosom, out of our mouth, and our works and what we do, that we give Torah unto Almighty Yahweh for all things, and through Yahshua HaMashiach, out of his abundance. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not. We faint not. But through our outward man perish, yet the inward man, it is renewed, it is restored day by day. Did I not just speak about that daily as we awaken? His abundance is before us. As we lay down, his abundance, Israel, is before us in Yahshua HaMashiach. So they are renewed, they are restored day by day. Verse 17. For our light afflictions, Sometimes we don't want to believe our afflictions, they are light. But they are. See, they are light afflictions, which is but for a moment. Works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of honor and splendor. Verse 18. Yet while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, they are temporal. Then it lasts for a moment, Israel. But the things which are not seen, he says, they are eternal. They are eternal. The Hava of Almighty Yahweh. The abundance in Yahshua Hamashiach, those things that should never, they should never fade. But they should only multiply to his nation to call Israel. Hallelujah. I want to read this in Shirak. In my closing tonight, Israel. That we understand even some of the aspects of this abundant Ahava in Yahshua HaMashiach. Shirak chapter 25, I'm going to read. Shirak chapter 11, verse 15. Then I'm going to move on to chapter 25. It says that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Torah, they are of Almighty Yahweh. Love. And the way of tough works, they are from him. Those things, they're from Yahweh, from Yahweh alone. Only Yahweh. Shirak 25 and 9. He said, prosperous and well is the person that has found prudence. And he that speaks in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that finds and gains wisdom. So I said, how great is that one that finds and gains wisdom? Yet there is none above him that fears Almighty Yahweh. Verse 11. But the Ahava of Yahweh surpasses all things for illumination. Even the sun. The brightness of that. His Ahava, it even surpasses that in abundance. The brightness of the sun, even that it shined down today, the heat and the light, the Hava of Almighty Yahweh, it surpasses even that. He that holds it fast, whereunto shall he be likened? If we hold, unto, hold fast unto the testimonies of Yahshua HaMashiach, to those things that has been spoken, Yisrael, then how should we be likened? How should we shine? How should we be presented 
in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. And in my closing verse 12, he says that the fear of Almighty Yahweh is the beginning of his Ahava. We must have Ahava above all things, Israel. And we know and we have heard tonight that he has given us his Ahava, his love, and abundance. Why? Because we need his Ahava. I need the abundance of his Ahava. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of his Ahava, his love. And Imuna, faith, is the beginning of the cleaving, of the latching, or holding on to him and his promises. So we must hold on to Yahweh. We must hold on to the promises, Yisrael, that he has given unto us. Even the abundance of it all. Realizing that what Yahweh has done and what he is doing for us as a people, as a nation, as he pours out his abundance. He is not slack concerning his promises, Israel. Yes. He delivers us. He brings us out. He moves us forward, Israel, according to the abundance yes. of his promises and the things, even from the very sheet, the beginning, Israel. Those things are still today full of abundance. They do not wear out. Because yes. Ahava, you cannot wear it out, Israel. It is full of abundance. We must walk according to the Mishvah and his Torah. We must walk according to to those things he has commanded us in Yahshua HaMashiach. Why? Because his abundance is Yahshua. His abundance is his word. So let us walk according to all the things he has commanded us. And everything will be all right, Israel. He's in control of everything. Every trial, every situation, he's in control of. Why? Because of the abundance of what he speaks he also gives us deliverance in Yahshua HaMashiach. There's no other deliverance. There's no other way out of trouble. There's no other way that we can be cleansed, Yisrael, from our sins, but through Yahshua HaMashiach. So let us continue to give Yahweh Todah for all things, for the abundance of his Ahava, the abundance of his understanding, and the abundance of his love, kindness, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Isn't Yahweh Todah? Even today, we will just look back. We'll see how his abundance and his ahava has kept us today. He has renewed us. He has brought us back into his bed, called Yisrael once again. We are gathered together. Those of you who are listening by via live stream, he has brought us here together. That we may listen to the tub message on this convey event. We do ask Yahweh who will continue to barak you all, Yisrael, strengthen you, keep you. In Yahshua's precious name, let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Let us shoot, let us turn, Israel. Abba Yahweh, we do tell you for this time that we have gathered, just for a moment, Abba Yahweh, that we may eat. Or your precious manna that come from Hashemayim, Abba Yahweh, that you even rain down upon Israel in abundance, Abba Yahweh, that you will fill our lives, you will fill our Hearts, Abba Yahweh, with understanding, with wisdom, and with knowledge, Abba Yahweh. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, that you continue to touch, call Yisrael, Yah, strengthen those that are weak, that are feeble. Restore unto Yisrael, Yah, the nation, Abba Yahweh, the Ahava, and Imuna, Abba Yahweh, that we depend on you, that we depend on Yahshua HaMashiach for all things. Because in all things, we do give you Todah. In the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yahweh. Yahweh Barak, you call Yisrael. Shalom, shalom.